nitaongea juu ya the sin of omission the sin of omission watu wengi huwa wachukuli the sin of omission kwa uzito but i want to, to show you from the word of god uh, that the sin of omission kulingana na mungu huwa anaiona kama wickedness anaiona kama uovu the sin of omission there are two types of sin the sin of commission and the sin of omission the sin of commission are the sins that you commit like uh, fornication like uh, speaking lies you commit you do but the sin of omission is the things that you omit to do that means you are supposed to do and you did not do it na bishop mwando asubuhi alituwekea msingi mzuri na akatuonyesha ah kutoka kitabu cha obadia obadia alitusomea misali kadhaa but if you read obadia from verse 10 um uh, that one chapter uh, from verse 10 uh, inatuonyesha ya kwamba because of the violence against your brother Jacob God is telling Esau you be covered with shame you be destroyed forever why on that day you stood a roof can you give us a new living transition what did he exactly do when they were invaded you stood a roof refusing to help them foreign invaders carried off their wealth and cast lots to divide up Jerusalem but you acted uh, like one of Israel's enemy praise the name of the living God you see God is telling them you stood a roof refusing to help them yani hiyo tukuka na unaangalia maadui wanavamia ndugu yako wanavamia Jerusalem na wewe hakuna kitu unafanya naye Mungu anamwambia hata wewe utaharibiwa kwa sababu gani kwa sababu tu ya kuangalia na kukosa kufanya chochote wapendwa mbele za Mungu ni vibaya kuangalia na ukose kufanya chochote especially wakati Mungu amekupatia kiwango cha ufunuo that is why we stand, we set our standards uh, according to the revelation that God has given us wengine tumejua ya kwamba tunapaswa kuwajibika na taifa letu ndiposa huwa tunachukua mzigo wa kuliombea huh? kwa sababu tukinyamaza na mambo ya haribike Mungu atatuuliza mulifanya nini wakati mulipoona uharibifu unaingia katika taifa na mkanyamaza inaitwa sin of omission that you could have done something but you did not do it that is why the bible says in the book of first samuel chapter 12 of, uh, and verse 23 Mose, uh, um, uh, samuel anasema sitafanya dhambi kwa kukosa kuombea nini as for me far be it from me that i should sin against the lord by failing to pray for you and I'll teach you the way that is good and light yani samuel anasema ya kwamba far be it from me that i may sin against the lord which kind of sin the sin of not praying for you as much as you may have rebelled from god as much as you have not done what is right before the lord but for me I will not commit a sin of omission by not praying for you praise the name of the living god prayerlessness is a sin and so many people don't pray and they don't know they are committing a sin because when you are watching even your family na mambo yanaharibika na uwezi kuchukua mzigo wa kuomba kama vile tumeona katika kitabu cha Obadia utaulizwa na Mungu wakati uliona mambo hayo yote yanafanyika uta utaulizwa ulifanya nini that is why the bible says in a book of uh, 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 first chronicles uh, this is a portion of scriptures you usually read uh, chapter 7 and verse 14 uh, if my people who are called by my name 
Second Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name, they will do what? Humble themselves and do what? And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will do what? Will heal their land. That portion you may go up and turn from their wicked ways. Mutu akiona jina hilo wicked anafikiria wickedness ni yule mtu pengine anaenda kuiba na buduki anachukua mke wa mwenyewe ama anafanya mambo kama yale. Lakini Yesu alitumia hili jina mara kadhaa juu ya mtu kuwa wicked. Na sehemu moja ambayo tunaiona ni in the book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 26. Na Yesu alitumia jina hili wicked ah uh, kwa sababu ya mtu ambaye alikuwa ameficha taranta yake his master replied you wicked lazy servant you knew that i harvest where i have not sown and gather where i have not scattered look at this servant anaambiwa you wicked and lazy servant you know the story it is a story of the talent ya kwamba mmoja alipewa taranta tano mwingine taranta mbili mwingine moja yule wa tano akafanya kazi zikawa kumi yule wa mbili akafanya kazi zikawa ine yule wa moja hakuifanyisha kazi akaificha wakati bwana yake aliporudi ambaye inasimamia Yesu Kristo alipouliza taranta yako ulifanya nini naye akasema nilijua wewe huwa unavuna mahali ujapanda so nilichukua nikaenda nikaificha bibi anasema ya kwamba aliitwa wicked and lazy servant so when we go back to chronicles that my people should forsake their wicked ways one of the ways of forsaking your wicked ways it is to do what God has called you to do using your gifts and your talents to serve others to serve your nation praise the name of the living God because ukinyamazia kile kipawa Mungu amekupatia ukificha ile taranta imewekwa ndani yako Bibi inatuonyesha kwamba you are wicked yani kumaanisha kwamba ungefanya jambo lakini haukufanya Na mfano mzuri ni ya kwamba kama wewe ni dereva wa gari ya Zimamoto. Na hii gari ya Zimamoto iko hapa. Na hii ni nyumba inachomeka. Na wewe unaiangalia inachomeka. Na hakuna kitu unafanya. Wewe ukikuta mtu kama huyo utafurahia. Yaani amekaa hapa, ako na gari, hii gari anaweza kufungulia maji, azime huu moto, lakini amekaa pale na hakuna kitu anafanya utaenda kucheka na ye. si akikutwa na raia anaweza pigwa na pengine hata huko kuna watu wanalia ndani wanapiga nduru lakini mtu wako na gari hapa iliyo na uwezo wa kuzima ule moto na hakuna kitu anafanya that is why this servant is called a wicked servant kwa sababu kile kipawa ameraria kinaweza leta wokovu Kinaweza kuwa msaada. Wewe fikiria tu kidogo. I'm not saying I'm good, I'm perfect, but just imagine kama maisha yangu ningenyamaza tu na nikosa kufanya kitu. Ha? Na Mungu amenipa kipawa. Ha? Ile mambo yote huwa tunafanya ya kumobilize maombi, kwenda peace prayer caravan. Unajua it's a grace, it's a gift. Imagine mambo kama haya yote ninyamaze na nikosa kufanya chochote. Sitakuwa vibaya sana. That is why in the Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 uh, and verse 16 Paul anasema uh, yet when I preach the gospel I cannot boast for I am compelled to preach. Look at this anasema woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Ole wangu if I don't preach the gospel, verse 17 and kwamba, if I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. 
If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. So there are two ways of obeying your call. Either voluntarily, but you can also be forced to do so. Kama Jonah. Jonah akwenda nine the voluntarily. Jonah alimezwa. Alikuwa forced. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Na kuna watu pia who are forced. Mungu analeta hali mpaka unajua kwamba I cannot run away from my calling. But there are others ambao they do it voluntarily. Wanasema Lord I surrender. I desire to do your will. I lay my life down. Use me for my generation. Use me for my nation. Use me for the church. I am willing to serve others because the Bible says whoever loses his life will get it back. But whoever refuses to lose his life for my sake, he will lose it. Bana sifue sana. So Paul anasema, "Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Why? I have been called. I've been empowered. I've been given the grace. And that is why Paul says, uh, the grace of God upon me was not without effect." Na anasema pia, "Do not take the grace of God in vain." kama nchi hii itaona uvuvio ni kwa sababu kuna watu watakataa kuchukua neema ya Mungu. Bule unaona kama vile tunaomba and you sense there is a lot of grace even when we are praying. Wapendwa, kama sio Mungu, fasting inaweza kuwa ngumu sana. Maombi inaweza kuwa ngumu sana. Lakini angalia vile tumekuwa tukiomba hata hizi prayer festival. Watu wanasema ninaomba mara ya kwanza na kufunga nilikuwa naomba siku tatu nikakuta hata nimeomba zote saba kwa sababu kulikuwa na neema kwa nini Mungu anawaachilia neema ni kwa sababu akona kusudi na lazima awe na watu walio tayari kusimamia kusudi lake i mentioned about judges chapter 15 from verse 7 and we saw the story of samson ya kwamba the story of Samson wakati alikuwa anashikwa na watu wa kabila lake Samson said to them since you have acted like this i won't stop until i get my revenge on you he attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them then he went down and stayed in a cave in the rock of etam the philistines went up and camped in judah spreading out near lehi the men of judah asked Why have you come to fight us? We have come to take Samson prisoner. They answered, to do to him as he did to us. The 3000 men from Judah went down to the cave in the rock of Etam and said to Samson, "Don't you realize that the Philistines are rulers over us? What have you done to us?" He answered, "I merely did them uh, what they did to me." They said to him, "We have come to tie you and hand you over to the Philistines." Samson said, "Swear to me that you won't kill me yourselves." Agreed, they answered, "We will only tie you up and hand you over to them. We will not kill you." So they bound him with two new ropes and led him up from the rock. After he approached Lehi, The Philistines came to add him shouting the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. The ropes on his arms came like charred flax. And the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Then Samson said, "With a donkey's jawbone, I have made donkeys of them. With a donkey's jawbone, I have killed a thousand men." You see, this portion of scripture, maybe without a revelation, unaweza kuisoma tu na wone is just like any other story, but it is a very touching story. Praise the name of the living God. Ambayo inaonyesha how people can go so wrong when they are committing a sin of omission. That this is a tribe of Judah. Huh? Kabila la Yuda ambalo lilikuwa na uwezo wa kutoa viongozi katika Israeli. 
Lakini wanapomwangalia Samson ya kwamba anawaangamiza Wafilisti wakitishwa kidogo na Wafilisti wanaenda kwa Samson wanaambia Samson kwa nini unafanya hivi haujui sisi ni watumwa wa Wafilisti how can you confess that huh? as a tribe of the lion of Judah who are supposed to offer leadership na mkubaliane na maadui ya kwamba mmekubali kuwa watumwa furthermore mnakuta mtu wenu you are hero ambaye he was a one man army kwa kutetea Israeli then the one hero and the one man army mnamshika paka na wasi ya kwamba nyinyi wenyewe msiniumize kwa sababu yeye anajua sijapakwa kuumiza ndugu zangu na dada zangu god will never anoint you to destroy your brothers and your sisters in the church and you have an anointing na kazi yako ni kuharibu wengine huo upako uondolewe mara moja haustahili kupakwa ili umize wengine ili ufunge wengine ili uzuilie wengine wasiingie kwa hati mazao na Samson alijua hivyo alijua ya kwamba hata kama nimepakwa hawa ni ndugu zangu hawa ni dada zangu in fact even if what they are doing is not right Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So hata ukiwa mchungaji, Qur'ani watu. Hata kama wamefanya nini. Praise the name of the living God. That is not what you are supposed to do. There is a level you cannot rise in the grace and in the anointing of God if you do upako ni upanga. Bwana asifiwe sana. Unaweza kusema watu wachomeke wachomeke. Na hivyo kama ujui kuutumia basi Mungu atauchukua kutoka kwako. So Samson akajua kwamba hawa siwezi kuwaumiza. Lakini imagine wanamwambia munifunge. Na wanachukua kamba bili mpya. Wanafunga dugu yao. Wanafunga the hero. Wanafunga the one man ame. How many were there? 3000. How many were there in the army of Gideon? 300 badala ya waseme ya kwamba sisi elfu tatu kuja uwe wa komanda tongoze na inaonekana wakati walienda kutafuta Samson mahali yamejificha hawakuwa na wafilisti so wangeenda pale wamwambie Samson hatutakupeleka tuongoze kila mtu atafute silaha hata Samson mwenyewe hakuwa na silaha wakati alikata kamba alichukua tu a fresh jawbone of a donkey a simple weapon because when we trust in God our sufficiency is not in us our sufficiency is in God anaweza kukutumia na masomo kidogo anaweza kukutumia if you are willing if you are obedient ukijitoa kwa Mungu if you are available for God he can use you Bwana asifiwe sana wakaenda kumpatia na Samson watu 1000 lakini naye Samson ni nani kumbe hawajui Mungu alikubalia Samson aandaliwe kutoka kuzaliwa Ukiona Mungu anangojea anaenda kwa kina Manoa anasema mke wako atachukua mimba ndio azae mtoto ambaye ataanza kuwakomboa Wafilisti ni kwa sababu watu wale wengine walikuwako they had compromised the sin of omission they refused to, stood, to stand up for their nation they refused to stand up to fight the battles of the Lord that means people can live in oppression kama hakuna mtu ambaye anasema nitainuka nitasimama hii jamii komborewe huu muji ukomborewe hili taifa likomborewe people can commit a whole nation can commit the sin of omission na kuwe hakuna mtu ambaye anakubali kuinuka na kusimamia makusudi ya Mungu Praise the name of the living God 
Hallelujah. Because God did not create anything uh, without a purpose, without an intent. Kenya is here for a purpose. And we must stand up for the purposes of God for our nation, for our generation. Na wakati tunakata kufanya hivyo, Mungu anaona ya kwamba we are committing the sin of omission. We repent that sin and we are telling God forgive us. Paul anasema, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. That means refusing God judges the sin of omission the same way he judges the sin of commission. Because some people think uh, the sin of omission is hiyo ni raisi. Ni kuomba tu si kuomba. Ni mwito wangu nimekataa tu kusimamia hata kama ninajua. Ni kipawa changu nimekataa kufanyia kazi. Watu wanaona kama hiyo ni rahisi. Lakini ya ujui ya kwamba there are people who have suffered in this life. Bwana asifuwe sana. Hallelujah. I remember a lady who was in this ministry. Mungu alikuwa na muita. Na ya kampatia mungu sababu nyingi. Na sababu moja alikuwa nasema mungu nitawacha watoto wangu na nani. Mungu wakamuambia nitawaondoa hapa duniani. Ndiyo uweze kunitumikia. And God was serious about it. Praise the name of the living God. Kwa sababu wewe unakataa kusimama kwa watu wengine. Kwa sababu ya watoto wako. Na haujui kusimama kwako kunaweza okua maelfu. Siafadhali mungu wapoteze haa wako watatu. Lakini maelfu wa okolewe. So watu huwa wanacheza na the sin of omission. Ya kwamba ni katatu na kata kiri ambacho mungu wameniambia nifanye. Iyo siyo shida kubwa. But let me tell you. Paul said woe unto me. There are people who are suffering. The source is a sin of omission. Wameralia vipawa vyao. Wamejua kusudi la mungu. Wamekata kuinuka. Wasimamie kusudi la mungu. Na wanataka kuendelea na biashara zao. Wanataka waendele na maisha yao kama kawaida. Nae mungu wanasema it is not business as usual. Kwa sababu kukosa kusimama kwako. Maerfu na maerfu anaumia Kama ningekata muito wangu Siku ya leo Unafikiria mungu wageni kubalia tu Aseme we, we kimani Nimeona haupendi kuhubiri Na nimeona haupendi mambo ya kanisa Wacha ni kuachirie tu We ndelea na maisha yako Kuwa na biyashara zako Na mambo yale You know I was very ambitious Na mambo ya biyashara Apana Molidekai Alimuambia Esther Usipo si mama Mungu atatafuta msaada mahali pengine Lakini wewe Na jamii yako Mutafanya nini? Mutaangamia That means by the time Mungu anaenda kutafuta mtu mwingine Na nyinyi Wewe na jamii yako Esther Musiseme you are secure Because you are in the palace Don't think that you yourself You are going to be delivered alone you are going to live in safety alone. No. Mungu atapata msaada. Atainua mtu muingine. Lakini wewe. Ndiyo utakai umia. Wapendwa. Nidaisi sana. Kuona wakovu katika taifa. Nidaisi sana kuwa na revival. Especially kiwa ni katika mapenzi ya mungu. Lakini. Shida tulio na yokubwa. Ni watu wengi wanakata kusimamia mwito wao. Mambo yale huwe ya nafanya tungangane. I remember one time there was something I was doing because God had commanded me. Alikuwa miongoza kufanya. So one time nikaambia mungu. Mbona uliniambia nifanya hili jambo na ninangangana sana kifedha. Mungu wakaniambia kuna watu ni meamuru wa kulete pesa. Lakini wamekata. Wamekata kuleta zile pesa. Kumanisha ya kwamba I can obey my part But somebody else somewhere Is refusing to obey Ok mungu haku niambia majina ya hao watu Na haku niambia nienda ni waitishe Lakini na amini ya liwashukulikia Na sijui ya liwashukulikia na mnagani Lakini 
lazima wawe hata wao wenyewe walikuwa wanajua ukisikia Mungu anasema wanakataa ni kumaanisha ya kwamba he has prompted them wengine wamewazungumzia kazi ya Mungu huwa ngumu sana kwa sababu kuna watu wanakataa kusimamia nafasi zao kuna watu wako na kipawa lakini wameficha na hiyo Mungu huwa anasema ni uovu taifa kama hili na hili si sana kuliingiza katika makusudi ya Bwana lakini kuna watu ukataa kusimamia nafasi zao wakati mwingine hata ukisema tunaombea taifa wengine hata wana shughuli hata vile tumeona amani mwaka jana ni kuhurumiwa na Mungu usiseme ni kuomba sana bado kuna watu walikula na kunywa bado kuna watu hawakushughulika bado kuna watu hawakuchukua mzigo huo na uzito It's by the mercies of God kama sisi wote tungeinuka kama jeshi na kila mtu asimame katika nafasi yake bila kusukumana na tufuatilie vipawa na mzigo Mungu ameweka ndani yetu na kila mtu atabue nafasi yake it is very easy to deliver a nation it is very easy to fulfill god's purpose in our generation it is very easy to bring salvation sometimes i see how i, I always see how god moves or even how god uh, uh, does things even in, in the ministry na huwa ninajiambia kama tungejitoa zaidi si mungu angefanya hata zaidi because he is a rewarder of them who seek him diligently hata mimi upima maisha yangu ninasema kama mungu umenitumia na ninajua vile nimejitoa si kama ningejitoa zaidi si ungenitumia zaidi so i know god is not the problem i am the problem we are the problem god is forever faithful god is a rewarder god is a no man's debtor god is not a liar but we are the ones who fail god may god forgive us every sin of omission I prayed for mercy that whatever God expected me to do for me to be effective in my calling uh, for me to be effective in my mandate uh, and I have not done it uh, may God have mercy upon me in the mighty name of Jesus you know one of the challenges with the sins of omission so that we can pray is that many times it's only you and God who knows Unajua si tunaweza kukuangalia. Watu wanaweza kuniangalia wasema oh Apostle Kimani ni mzuri, amejitoa kwa kazi ya Mungu na mambo kama yale. But it's only me who know according to the grace, according to the instructions, am I walking in God's will. Wakati merikebu ilikuwa na shida. Hakuna mtu mwingine alikuwa anajua shida iko wapi. Ha? Lakini Jona alikuwa anajua He knew that I am the cause of this trouble. Paka dakika ya mwisho akawaambia kama mnataka hii shida ikwishe, munichukue, munitupe baharini. Na siyo kwa nini walisema amchukue sijui haku anataka suicide. Because yeye angejitupa tu. Bwana asifue sana. Haleluya. Lakini alikuwa anajua kwamba I am the cause of this problem. Mimi ndio nileta shida hii yote. Jina Bwana ipewe sifa. Aka nalikuwa najua ya kwamba mimi ndio nimeleta shida hii yote katika Israeli. Na kwa hivyo sisi tunaweza kuangalia because you know the challenge with the sin of omission ni ya kwamba ni ngumu sana nipate pasta wa home ameka hapo 3 hours alafu nimwambie kuna kitu umefanya dhambi wewe ataniuliza nimefanya nini na yeye amekuwa pale na kuna kitu amefanya lakini ndani ya moyo wake pengine kuna sauti ilikuwa inamwambia ninakutuma bondeni kuna watu wangu pale wamefungwa na shetani na usipoenda kuwahubiria watauawa lakini yeye amekaa tu So wewe ukimwangalia hauwezi kuona shida 
lakini ye ndani ya moyo wake anajua kuna mvutano ya kwamba ninafaa kuondoka hapa niende nikashuhudie wenye dhambi lakini sijaenda so the sin of omission ni wewe tu unajua kile Mungu amekwambia na hujafanya jina bwana ipewe sifa haleluya wewe unajua katikati yako na Mungu ni nini Mungu amekuwa akikuhimiza na hujakubali kuwa mwaminifu si tumwambie Mungu mwaka huu atusaidie wapendwa kuna watu wengi walio na potential lakini wameficha vipawa vyao badala ya watoe kile Mungu amewapatia Bibi inasema in the book of Jeremiah a curse on him who withdraws his sword from bloodshed Yakoba mtu yule ambaye katika vita anakataa kutoa upanga wake umwage damu bibi inasema huyo mtu ameraaniwa kwa sababu gani ni anafanya watu wengi waumie na angezuilia vita hiyo inasimamia nini upanga wako unaweza kuwa ni neno lile ambalo unaweza kuhubiria watu John Jeremiah 48 verse 10 a curse on him who is lax in doing the Lord's work a curse on him who keeps his sword from bloodshed don't you see that part one mtu ambaye is lax in doing the Lord's work haisemi hata afanyi ragziti ndipo saule servant aliambua you wicked and lazy kazi ya Mungu watu wengi huwa wanaifanya na uvivu hata kanisani kuja ha? watu wanaenda kazini mapema saa mbili kama ni saa mbili ako pale afadhali awache chai ama kama kuna mkate ya mkorogo ilikuwa inapikwa aiwache jina bana ipewe sifa lakini kama ni sande inakorogwa hapo na anasema ongeza ingine hatuna haraka apostle bado hajasimama kuhubiri taka kama wamemaliza maombi tutapata tunotoko kolerera oh hali ya tole kolerera mahali tu tutapata lakini kazini hakuna mtu anasema mahali tu tutapata you must be there on time so there is a lot of ragziti rack of commitment bwana asifuwe sana kazi ya mungu watu wanaifanya na ulegevu naye bibi nasema ya kwamba araaniwe yule afanyaye kazi ya mungu kwa ulegevu si mungu anihurumie kumbe kuna laana mtu anaweza kupata kwa sababu kazi ya mungu hatuichukuli na uzito yule anayezuilia upanga wake usimwage damu mahali ungetangaza neno mahali ungemletea bwana utukufu kipawa ambacho ungeweza kutumia upigane vita kwa ajili ya bwana maombezi ungeweza kufanya uzuilie mipango ya shetani katika jamii katika muji katika taifa unakosa kusimama how many sins of omission have we committed let me tell you god is very serious about the sins of omission